Hello dear truth seekers. In this video I will discuss the genuine land of the Moors. It's not where most of us think. Nothing is where most of us believe it is. We all believe that all historical events occurred in Africa or areas surrounding Africa, not here. But it was all a fabrication and it was later manipulated to make it appear that all historical sites were in Africa or elsewhere other than America. It's time to go back thousands of years. It's time for the truth. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Why does Florida have this panhandle? Why does it end here and not here? Or why isn't it part of Alabama? It's because of stolen <clears throat> history. In the distant past, Florida belonged to Spain, and Louisiana was part of France. The border between them ran through the Perdido River. Over the decades, these territories changed hands constantly. This is how the map looked after the American Revolution. France needed funds for the war, so Napoleon decided to sell Louisiana to the U.S. A few years later, the U.S. remembered that the border used to run along this river and decided to just stole that part. Spain didn't have the resources to respond with war, so they simply agreed to it. Later, Spain sold the rest of the land, and that became the state of Florida, with the peninsula being East Florida and the Panhandle being West Florida. Alabama really wanted to annex the Panhandle, making various offers dozens of times, even proposing to buy these lands for $1 million at that time. But despite even the locals voting for annexation to Alabama, Florida refused and remained as we know it today. As I said many times before, the Moors ruled Spain for over 800 years until the Catholic monarch attempted to seize Granada, which was populated by the Moors, who were colored Negroes. They also tried to annihilate the Jews slash Moors and forced them to convert to Christianity, which is how Caucasian slash Christians were able to take over and still are ruling through the spell of Christianity that keeps many colored Negroes blind and lost and all other races as well. Now, despite the Caucasians and Christianity's attempts to take over the territory of the Moors and force them to convert to Christianity, many Moors were Muslims and their religion was respected for a time. However, after the fall of Granada in 1492, Cardinal Jimenez converted many Moors. Those who opposed Christianity were treated poorly. The harsh treatment of those who refused conversion or apostatized from the new faith led to an uprising in Granada from 1500 to 1502. This uprising was soon suppressed and the Moors were given the choice between conversion or banishment. The majority accepted conversion for safety reasons, but many continued to practice Islam secretly. The Moriscos, which is Spanish, means Muslims who were forced to convert to Christianity rather than be killed or expelled from Spain and Portugal in the early 1500s. Now, despite this forced conversion, some Moriscos did provide the Ottoman Turks with information facilitating Turkish raids on the Spanish coast. But get this, all of these battles took place in America. This is why we as Americans celebrate Thanksgiving. It has nothing to do with Indians. It was due to the end of the bloody fight against the Moors in 1491, after our people occupied Spain and America for over 700 to 800 years. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain were advocates slash recruiters from Christianity, Vatican, and Romans fell upon their knees and thanked Santiago for their victory over the Moors. Now on this day, the Pope of Rome proclaimed that day to be forever the day of Thanksgiving for all new European Christians. Yeah, why? Because the so-called blacks of Granada called Moors, who were originally from America, Africa, Spain, Arabia, surrendered the city of Granada uh -huh. The last stronghold of the Moors in Spain, you see, and the walls of the Moorish Empire came tumbling down. The Saudi and Moors were driven into Morocco and further down the West Africa and were later betrayed, captured, and sold into America as slaves. Hunted down Moors in areas such as Baghdad, Turkey, 
and slaying or enslaving them was an act highly regarded by the Christian and European forces who despised the Moors and called them turkeys and vowed to celebrate this victory by cutting turkeys in remembrance. Oh yes. The Moors were known for their head wraps. So any pictures you see with a figurehead with a head wrap are Moors. Please know all Negroes, Blacks, colored Africans, etc. Don't all have coarse hair. A lot of us have wavy hair or loose curly hair. They separated them thousands of years later and start calling them Indians. Oh yes. And then a lighter shade, they called them Hispanic. Oh yes. Now, not all were conquered after this battle. Some parts of America were still ruled by the Tartarians. Moors, yeah. Tartarians, Moors, or Tartaria, who still ruled a large part of America, heck, the world into the Great Mud Flood. In recent years, a new alternative world history claim has surfaced on the internet. It revolves around a theory suggesting that a worldwide cataclysm occurred in the 1600s to the 1700s, causing the destruction of an advanced worldwide civilization and leading to the rise of nations we know today. Now, according to this theory, the cataclysm was a mud flood event and several meters of mud washed in and buried the ground levels of houses and buildings worldwide. Now, adherents of this theory believe that the cities and towns that were partially buried constituted the advanced civilization called Tataria, which had free wireless energy and potentially was populated by giants as well. Proponents of this theory proposed that this was a reset of civilization, replacing the old with the new. Despite how far-fetched this may sound, it is worth taking a closer look at, don't you think? Now, let's start by examining the evidence presented for the mud flood theory. Finding the old black and white photos where people are seen digging, especially with the use of old tools like steam shovels or mule teams, it's cited as evidence. These photos are suggested to depict people digging out from the great depth of mud that covered their city. Additionally, modern photographs of old buildings with floors below ground level, especially those with basement windows or exposed basement walls due to the nearby excavation, are cited as proof that the buildings as lower levels were buried by mud. And pretty much more evidence. Take a look at these clips. Were the Tartarians intentionally hidden from world history? History is all a lie. Ever heard of the Tartarians? Well, they were a unified and advanced race of people who built extremely well-crafted buildings like this, and they designed them in order to obtain free energy from the atmosphere. These style of buildings are everywhere, yet people attribute them to design and architecture styles, and the history and true meaning of them has been falsified by someone or something that doesn't want us to know about it. There is so much more to the story. Think about it. What happened? If we did actually build these, then how have we gone so far downhill? Well, the theory goes that there was already a powerful organization that controlled the world through the sale of energy and had already heavily invested into energy production. They were completely against Tartaria because free energy would be the end of any control that they had. So they tore Tartaria apart and erased them from our history, making it seem like Tartaria never existed. But if you dig deep, there is still a load of evidence that proves their existence. Just look at all these buildings and architectural structures that seem to advance to have been built by the respective nations. Funny enough, all of these structures have a common theme, harvesting energy. The Tartaria Mud Flood Theory is a controversial hypothesis that suggests a catastrophic event took place in the 18th or 19th century resulting in a massive flood of mud that covered entire cities and wiped out entire civilizations. According to this theory, the civilization of Tartary, which was once a powerful empire that covered a large part of the Eurasian continent, was destroyed by this event, and its existence was deliberately erased from history by the ruling elite. One of the main pieces of evidence cited by proponents of the Tartaria mud flood theory is the presence of mysterious buildings and structures in various parts of the world that seem to be older than the officially recognized timeline of human history. These structures, known as megaliths, 
are often made of large stone blocks that would have been impossible to move and erect using the technology available at the time they were supposedly built. Another piece of evidence cited by proponents of the Tartaria mud flood theory is the strange architectural features found in many old buildings in Europe and elsewhere. These features, such as strange windows and doorways, seem to have no practical purpose and are unlike anything found in modern architecture. Proponents of the theory argue that these features are remnants of an older civilization that was destroyed by the mud flood. There are also claims that the Tartaria mud flood theory is supported by geological evidence. Some researchers have pointed to the presence of sedimentary layers in certain regions of the world that seem to indicate a massive flood event took place at some point in the past. Other researchers have claimed that the soil samples from various parts of the world contain high levels of unusual substances, such as iridium, that are typically associated with meteor impacts or other catastrophic events. Proponents of the Tartaria mud flood th Origin of modern Asians the Tartarians? Well, the Tartarians are the Eurasian mongoloid root race that inhabited the second world supercontinent known as Laurasia, aka Tartary. They were born in the Arctic or Tartic regions and the Antarctic regions, and they are the descendants of the Denisovans and the Neanderthals. With the destruction of Atlantis, aka the Ice Age, the Lemurian Negroid interbred with the Neanderthals and the Denisovans for survival, as the Neanderthals were built to survive these harsh regions and had already made their homes in subterranean tunnels and under underground caves. Within these underground caves, the Lemurian Negroid interbred with the Neanderthal in a process called hybridization. When they emerged from the caves, they were the anatomically modern Eurasian Mongoloid. They were born all over Tartaria, which is northern Europe, northern western and central Asia, and northern America up into the Arctic region. They were very barbaric in nature due to their harsh environment, and this new hybrid race immediately became a threat and a rival to their Lemurian Negroid forebearers. As they came from the north, the Tartarians invaded and seized previous Lemurian cities and structures. As they met stronger Lemurian forces such as the ancient Egyptians, they were sometimes subdued and civilized, and that's how they learned architecture and language. Fortifications such as the Sumerian Wall were built to keep these Tartarians from invading any further. Scientifically, the Tartarians can be represented by Y-DNA haplogroups F through Q, with F being the outer Africa gene which ties the mongoloid to the negroid, and Q being the haplogroup representing the Siberian mongoloid. Ethnically, the Tartarians can be represented by the Nephilim, the Hittites and the Hivites, the Canaanites, the mongoloids, and the Siberian North American. Biblically, the Tartarians can be represented by the Semite, as the word Semite means half or part human, aka the Nephilim. They were civilized by people like Nimrod, who was the mighty hunter before the Lord, able to tame the Neanderthal. Nimrod was the Lemurian who mixed with the Neanderthal in the Sumer region and used the Tartarians to build his empire. Nimrod was the grandfather of Peleg, which would make him also the great-great-great-grandfather of Abraham the Semite. Nimrod was the son of Cush, which we should all know by now as the esoteric name of Atlantis, or Lemuria. That's the gorilla in the room. Plus over. Moors are indigenous, enlightened, melanated peoples. Evidence suggests that the term Moor means more than just black people, as the Berbers are an indigenous tribe that are white with blue and green colored eyes. Contrary to popular belief, the term is not synonymous with Islamic or any specific Arab or African religion, civilization, or ethnicity. But this is the term that I'm going to be using in this presentation to refer to black people, or what we know as African American. The origin of the English term Moor is the Greek word Mavro, which literally means black, blackened or charred. It has been used to describe black for things such as the Mavri Thalassa, which refers to the Black Sea. The Moors have a rich history, though we're never told about this and I'll tell you why towards the end. The Moors had high civilizations in Egypt, Sumer, Persia, Canaan, Greece, and the ancient Indus Valley. Now remember guys, I'm trying to look at this from all angles, so in my opinion, I do believe at this time, these were a melting pot of mixed cultures. Can anybody tell me why the city of Paris looks so empty? In these old photographs, it looks like nobody's around. And yet, we see these majestic buildings. Now, of course, as years go by, we see more people. But tell me something. Do these look like the type of people to have built all this infrastructure? 
Where are the workers? Where are the great trucks full of materials? Where's everything? You don't see that. But what you do see is people living life to their fullest. And there's very few of them compared to how big these buildings are. What happened? Well, these buildings were found and not founded. A great reset happened all over the world. And in Paris, this was the new population. All of these buildings all around here, as I told in class last night, they're ours, they belong to us. They're ancient, these buildings. There's a whole city underneath this city. They went and burned all the major cities, the major energy centers. Our ancestors set up these energy centers that we call Philadelphia, New York, Boston, Atlanta, Detroit, right? Chicago, Miami, Los Angeles, they are energy centers. They're not where they are in the huge, large cities just because of some coincidence. There's energy and power in these places, London, Rio de Janeiro. Tartarian with a beard. And barbarian the only by beards Narco I follow Lando. the beards. Okay, if you're into Tartaria, you should be into Barbaria too, because they're the same word. Tartaria means east of Rome. Because we have a Roman history, guys. Remember, we have a Roman history. Tartaria means east of Rome. Barbaria means west of Rome. That's why you have Berbers in North Africa that are black, and you have barbarians in Germany and Scandinavia that are white. It's a Roman perspective to history. Okay, so Barbaria and Tartaria are the same thing. Well, in the Barbary Wars, where America was fighting Moors, we were fighting Morocco, Mauritania, um, Algeria, I think, these Moorish countries. That was in the uh, 18, early 1800s, mid-1800s, the Barbary Wars. As soon as we won the Barbary Wars fighting North African Moorish pirates, what happened in America? The age of piracy in South Florida. The Navy, the U.S. Navy, immediately left North Africa and came to the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean and Key West, and they enacted martial law in Key West in the name of fighting piracy. So who were these pirates that, the, that they were fighting that just popped up in Key West? Well, Florida was acquired in a, in a late 18-teens, early 1820s, right, officially. In 1820, there was not a single permanent resident in Key West. By 1830, Key West was the richest city in America. How is that possible? That's crazy, During, dude. And, and we're told that it was all due to pirates that were making such good money and shipwreckers and uh, divers, treasure divers. Well, I guess all these pirates were doing their taxes if, <laughs> if Florida, you know, if Key West became the richest city in America and it was the most populated city in Florida. One problem, there was no bridge. <laughs> you had to get there by boat. So what was going on in Key West where it was in a matter of nine years went from not having a single person living there to being America's richest city? What happened? Well, it was pirates. 
It was the Barbers, the Berbers, the Seminoles, Semitic people. But uh, they showed. Hold on. So you're saying I think they moved in. They just moved in with all their pirate booty. It's it's more just that the magnifying glass went to Florida because they were fighting the Moors. America, America was fighting the Moors in North Africa. As soon as that war ended, we unofficially started fighting the Moors in South Florida. Okay. Oh, so we went in, took over, and then we're like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's a lot of gold here, and now it's the richest city out there. Yes. Whoa, bro. Yep. And the, when the first railroad got to Key West, the population plummeted. So think about that. The only way to get there was um, by boat up until uh, early 1900s, 1910s, I think, 1920s maybe. When the first railroad got to Key West, that flagler, used slaves to build, right? And Seminoles. They were using Seminoles and slaves to build it. Um, when they got there, the population decreased. So how does that make sense? If this is the first time that you can actually access it by land, all the people just leave? Makes very little, very little sense. So they sense. went there and killed everybody. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They now, went there, killed everything, transferred the wealth to essentially the white people, the new the new white people. And, uh, the, the, you know, that's that's all there is to the story, really. Oh my God, dude, this is just so fucking blows my mind because like, you know, this is Sam speaking. There has been a giant psyop against the black community, uh, this victimhood put on them that they all came here in a fucking boat, defeated and turned into slaves, right? When in reality, they discovered America and we're here before a lot of people. The Tartarian Moors existence was systematically erased throughout America. Every trace of their presence was targeted for removal. In addition to destroying any reminder of their culture, historical buildings built by the Tartarian Moors were either tampered with or attributed to other civilizations. This manipulation of history aimed to paint the perpetrators as great and divine, effectively erasing an an entire civilization and thousands of years from our historical records. Oh yes. So you see, they destroyed the Egyptians and ancient civilizations with a great flood. In the hot climbing places they did this. In the south and ice in the colder places up north here in America. Let me say that again, just in case it got lost upon some of you. They destroyed Egyptian and ancient civilizations with the great flood. And this was in the high climate places, which was majority in the South. And then they destroyed other parts with ice. That was in the colder places, which is up North in America. You see evidence of that at the Grand Canyons and some places in California, Nevada, Florida, Chicago, and many other areas where there are great mountains and historical buildings. So some ancient people were tired of setting up camps, building things, etc., and decided to start over in Africa. However, the majority remained in America. They were known as the Moors, as they thrived ruling for thousands of years into the 1700s and early 1800s. This was when the America, what should I say? This is when America experienced annihilation and destruction. This mostly began around the Revolutionary War and the widespread development of Christianity. The Vatican and the Romans, with the assistance of some of the greedy and ruthless Anunnaki identities, were responsible for all the catastrophic disasters that terminate indigenous peoples, progress, and exalted them. Oh yes. Some billionaire families are also helping to maintain control over their Caucasian Christianity. For example, the Rothschilds are the principal source of the current wars in the new land of Israel. Oh yes. Now consider this. They covered an entire city beneath Lake Lanier. If you don't want to believe this theory. But there is so much evidence. Let me say it again. They covered an entire city beneath Lake Lanier. And while doing so, they demolished, burnt, and then created Central Park on top of Seneca Village. Wall Street in New York was developed on historically black owned land, which was known as the Five Points of District in the 1830s, or also known as Five Points District, but was known as the Wall Street slave market a century earlier. And I can go on, there's so much more. But I believe you all get the point. Now, historically Caucasians were barbarous. I'm not talking about the ones who are. No, I'm not talking about you guys currently. I'm talking about your ancestors. They were barbarous, vicious, and diseased. They lacked morality, 
honesty and sense. They wanted whatever our people had. And if they couldn't take it, they destroyed it and then forced us to build it for them via slavery. This power was conferred by the Vatican as well as through Christianity, brainwashing power to be continued. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post my videos. Love you all. See you later. Bye.